Now let's walk through how to create queries in WData. I have a few tables open uh, on my screen over here. I have a fact table that has my numerical data, and I have a couple of dimension tables which have a, a company dimension as well as an account dimension as well. To create a query, we can hit the plus button or create and we can go to query. Now you can create queries from single tables, multiple tables, uh, queries, or even uh, Workiva spreadsheets. If we want to bring in our data that we had just talked through, we can go to add table data. We can go and select our three tables that we have and we can hit add. Now these show up in the left-hand panel underneath sources. We can expand these in order to pull in the, um, the columns that, that we want to see in our data set. So I'll bring in account and you can drag and drop them in, in any order, period, company code, and amount. We can also bring in fields from the other tables. So we can take, for example, our account name. We can take the different account groups to be able to see the hierarchy information. Now I'll talk through in a second what this, um, this error means that we came across. Let me just bring in our fields first. Okay, so when you bring in data that's across multiple tables, you need to join each of these tables together into a data set. So we can bring our GL data into our join field, and we will join on the company code equal to the company code from our entity mapping table. We can select the join type that we have here. We could also um, select the criteria we can add another join. So we could add multiple fields if, if we need to join on multiple columns in the source being equal to multiple columns in our target, um, or we can add multiple joins. So here since we have three tables, we need to have two joins. So we will then take our account and we will map that to our account mapping table account field, and now our errors go away. Now we have all of our fields. We can run this query at any time just to preview the data. It's good to periodically do this so that way um, we know if we're getting the data set that we're expecting. If we want to see um, different columns in different orders, we can drag and drop to reorder any of these accounts as well. So if I want to see my account name right after uh, my account, and if I want to see my entity name after the company code, we can do that. We can rerun our query. And we'll see the new, the new order in here. Next, we can add sorting capabilities in here if we want to sort based on the account number, for example, based on the amount, we can drag fields here and we can show this in descending order or ascending order of the query. And now we, we start to see the numbers that we have here are descending. We could add filters to our um, our data set here too, where let's just say we wanted to uh, filter on the account equal. I'm going to look at my properties over here. We can enter a value or we can select parameters. So the parameters act as prompts where we can select our Select our prompt, we can name it, call it account prompt. 
the data type. We just need to make sure that this matches the fields that we're checking for. So we're going to make this a text because we are checking on a field that is a text field. We can make this a pick list if we want to drop down where somebody can, you know, enter, you know, choose from a, a predefined list of fields. Go and do this. I'm just going to enter a couple of these accounts just so that way we can see how this works. Create. And then we hit apply and then we see this take effect. Now when I run my query, it's going to ask me for what account I want to run this for. When I select my 300, 200, now we see that our data set is filtered to only um, that account. We can add multiple query um, filters in here as needed. We can also, um, for example, let me show you this. So if we bring in period, and make this a parameter. I'll just make this an entry that we can key in. We want to match the data type, so I'll make this a date field. Create and apply. See this take effect. Now we see in our filters we can choose how these filters are applied. So for example, do we want um, the first filter and the second filter? Do we want the first filter or the second one? We can type and change this as needed. Um, I forgot to mention, we also have different operators uh, in here as well that we can um, select in addition to um, just entering prompted fields. We can enter parentheses in here uh, if, if needed, and the system will validate and tell us whether or not um, we have a, a syntax error. If I type plus, it's going to show me that we have an invalid filter. And I can do or. change that back to end. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove my filter here. That way we have the first one just to make this a little bit easier to visualize. Run this again. And just note that we just have to delete the prompt that's in there, but right now it's not doing anything because we removed it from, from our query. The other um, feature that I wanted to show here is we have the ability to create cross-tab queries where if, say, essentially what this is, is this is just a simple pivot where we could enable cross-tab and now we can select what shows up in the rows versus what shows up in the columns. I'm going to pull for example, my entity names, the columns, the values, we will take our amount. We can choose the aggregation operator for sum, count, distinct count, min, max. There's a whole uh, bunch of fields over here as well. So I'll take both the company code as well as the entity name put those in my columns. Now when I run this, that query is running, and now we have totals by entity in different columns over here. And just note that if you put multiple um, you know, dimensions, if you will, in the columns, it separates them with a greater than sign over here. Once we have this data, we can either connect it into a WDesk spreadsheet. We can export these results and download the results uh, as needed. We can use 
this as the basis of our future analysis.